Hello and welcome to Out Motorsports, the channel for cars as you are. My name is Tyler and today we're driving the 2022 Hyundai Ioniq 5. Hyundai was nice enough to give us this car for the weekend for our Hot Girl Summer Road Rally out in Western Virginia and I'm super excited to give it a go. This car's been making a lot of waves both in the enthusiast and regular car buyer community, not only because of its, I think, gorgeous looks, but also its platform in general. This car rides on the eGMP platform. It is shared not only with this car, but the Kia EV6 and the Genesis GV60. You can get this platform in two different drivetrain configurations. You can get it in rear wheel drive only that makes 225 horsepower, and you can get it in all wheel drive with a combined 320 horsepower dual motor, one on each front and rear axle. Our tester is the all wheel drive, quick version, it sprints to 60 in 5.2 seconds, and it's that instantaneous electric torque that everybody is so obsessed with lately. Stepping inside, if the car is unlocked, the handles will be out like this. Taking a look at the front seats, one of my favorite features on this entire car is this power adjustable leg rest. It's honestly almost like a lazy boy in here. The seats are very comfortable, although the driving position isn't exactly what I want. Uh, it's very, very close, and I, it's really nothing to complain about. The square cube design continues to the on the right side of the uh, inner seat right here, as well as this top shoulder area. These seats are heated and ventilated, and that is available through the main center infotainment screen right there. No hard buttons for the ventilated and heated seats some of the interior door trim. This is a matte finish door trim. It feels very solid, very quality. The squares continue all along here. We have backlighting. This entire part is a door pull and also an armrest. So this has a side where you can pull. There's lighting back here that you can switch at night, lighting all down by the speakers. This particular model has the upgraded Bose audio and it sounds average. It's nothing particularly great, but it's also not terrible at all. This softer, um, material right here. It looks like cloth, but it's uh, really more just like a textured rubber. Moving on to the steering wheel, this is actually only a two-spoke wheel, as you can see, with a nice flat bottom. And notice, no Hyundai logo on the center horn area. These four dots actually translate to H in Morse code. So not only does that keep with the cubed square design all throughout the interior and exterior, but also is a fun little quirky um, feature that Hyundai put in there. And you only know if you know. These are two 12 inch displays, both for your digital um, gauge cluster and your infotainment. And these are mostly very intuitive to use. You have your various um, menus with your ventilated and heated seats, your climate, which is also, um, you're able to adjust in uh, a little further down the dashboard here. But uh, I, what's interesting about this whole center stack gauge cluster area is that it's the only bezel I've seen that is white. And at first I didn't like it when I saw it in pictures or if I saw it on cars um, in public, I wasn't the biggest fan, but living with it, uh, even with this black interior, which you would think it doesn't really match very well, uh, I actually like it. It's, it's, it's kind of refreshing. It's different. This center console here gives you your cup holders as well as your wireless charging and more storage area and this entire center console can move back and forth. Hyundai's target range for this particular model is 300 miles however we've been getting closer to 250 260 miles of range and we're about to test that out on the rally tomorrow so we'll see how that does in the real world. So what we're going to do is I'm going to leave from my house in Northern Virginia, drive to the mountains in Western Virginia, which is about an hour away, do a 90 mile route and then drive home. So this is the ultimate real world test for somebody like me who was a little bit skeptical to have an EV when I use my cars like an enthusiast. <laughs> Okay, so we're starting off in my group 
group two at the Hot Girl Summer Road Rally. And we're, we're at a subdued 50 miles an hour on a country road right now. Nothing is too twisty. And this car has very sharp and angular lines, but the suspension is not as stiff or sharp as uh, the lines was, would suggest. And that's not to say that this car doesn't handle well. It's just that it's very comfortable. It has uh, very good road manners. As far, and comfort is its main priority. But that's not to say that when we get to the twisties later, it's not good, because it is. But around town, the way that this car will be used most of the time, uh, it does very well, it's very comfortable, the steering feels very natural. It's not a insanely quick rack. Uh, believe it or not, you actually have to crank some steering angle into it. But it's not unnatural in any way. It's not extremely slow, it's not extremely fast, it's just a very good natural steering ratio. The feel is even great for an electric car and an electric steering rack. I get a lot of the bumps and cracks and imperfections in the road making its way through the steering wheel. Part of that may be due to the fact that there's 20 inch wheels on this car with a small-ish sidewall. I'm doing the first half of this drive, or at least the less twisty bits, I say now as we go into a lovely banked corner. <laughs> but I'm doing the first half of this in normal mode. This car has eco mo mode, regular mode, and sport mode, all of which are selectable from a drive mode switch um, on the steering wheel. The switch actually looks like it should be something that you twist, but it's not, it's a button. So I shouldn't actually call it a switch. But I. Uh, in regular mode, the power delivery is, at least as far as I know, correct me if I'm wrong, Hyundai, correct, correct me if I'm wrong, I, I don't think the power levels are any different depending on what mode you're in, but in regular mode it is delivered differently. So one thing that I've noticed in regular mode when you floor it, especially from a dig, is there is a tiny little delay between when you, not throttle response, but when you get the, the full shove of the electric power. It's almost as if the rear motors start to give you some power and the fronts catch up after, or the opposite. Um, and it's only really noticeable when you're, you're looking for it. In sport mode, that power delivery seems to be instantaneous. The only th way that I can describe it is almost as if it's a car, it's a turbocharged car, like an internal combustion turbocharged car. You get that split second of turbo lag. Getting a little bit more into the nitty gritty of the handling dynamics, I say this every time I drive a modern Hyundai Kia Genesis product, but Albert Bierman, uh, the head of chassis engineering at BMW previously for 30 years, now works for Hyundai and Kia, or at least did. He just is stepping back a little bit for them now. But when this car was being designed and when the handling dynamics and the chassis dynamics of this car were being engineered, Albert Bierman, previous BMW, was in control of that. This all-wheel drive dual motor version is so neutral, and we're not exploring any of those limits around here uh, through these mountain twisties. Uh, we're going at a pretty reasonable speed, but that balance is still there. The dynamics are still there. It still makes it feel incredibly rewarding to hustle through the mountains. One of the fun little engineering pieces and uh, party tricks that Hyundai has done with this platform, it has uh, what they call IDA, and it shares the drive shaft and the wheel bearings all in one unit. So traditionally, your wheel bearings and your drive shafts are two completely separate things, but because the architecture of EVs are a little bit different, uh, people can get a little bit creative with how they package things. And it's cool to see uh, a time in history or vehicle history, EV history, where new engineering and new things are being done. Uh, it used to be, I feel like in the 70s and 80s and even 90s, the German car manufacturers were still doing fun, different, cool things with internal combustion and quirky design and engineering in their cars back then. And now everybody's kind of on the same playing field, but EVs give us uh, a taste of that like cutting edge engineering race. Everybody's doing something different, everybody wants to do something better, and we're in that time period and in that technology period where everybody's trying out new things. And this is something Hyundai Kia Genesis do. That's interesting, 
and fun to know. We are back from the rally with yet another EV. This one is a little bit different than the Ionic. However, we've had some time to digest and think about our week with the Ionic 5. And overall, just like Hyundai's other internal combustion products, the Ionic 5 is a great overall package. I will say I did get home with 30 miles to spare and I did have to stop after our full day of driving at the rally. I had to stop at night before I made it home. So compared to its competitors, the Ionic 5 might be a little bit short on range and that was probably the only reason I did have to stop to complete our full day. However, the total package I think makes up for situations like that. I think the way that I tested it was a bit extreme. Uh, and in most cases, people will only be using EVs to commute to and from work. Uh, road trips and such are still not something that I think most people use EVs for, but it can be done. I'd like to thank Hyundai for giving me the Ionic 5 for our rally over the weekend. It was truly a great driving and rally companion to have. If you would like to see more videos and would like to join us on the next rally, head over to outmotorsports.com or facebook.com slash outmotorsports. We have more to come, not just in the Northeast, but we would love to expand a little bit further west into the United States. So people who aren't in our region can join us even further. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I will see you next time.